Today we will be learning about semiconductor random access memory. In the previous lecture, we discussed about semiconductor memories which were broadly categorized into volatile memory and non-volatile memory. Random access memory comes under the category of volatile memories. Now what's a volatile memory? A memory which is capable of storing information as long as the DC power is applied to it. So here in this figure you can see the internal organization of bit cells in a memory chip. This whole figure constitutes one memory chip. So here you can see the bit cells or the memory cells. The memory cells are organized in the form of an array. We know that to retrieve an information from the memory, we cannot address each cell individually. So what we do is, we address a word of memory. A word of memory in the sense, a collection of cells is called as a word of a memory. So here, each row of the cell cells here, they constitute a memory word. And all the cells of the row are connected to a common line called as a word line. So look at the cells here in the first row. All these cells are connected to a common line called as a word line denoted by W0. Look at the second row. All the cells are connected to a common line, word line which is denoted by W1. So here in this example that I have shown here, how many word lines do we have? We have 16 word lines starting from W0 to W15. The cells in each column, they are connected to a sensor write circuit. All these cells are connected to a sensor write circuit through bit lines, two bit lines. These green colored lines are bit lines. They are B7 and B7 dash. Okay, so it, one bit line is the complement of the other one. So it's generally called as B and B dash. So in this figure you have B0, B0 dash, B1, B1 dash, B2, B2 dash up to B7, B7 dash. Now the sensor write circuit is connected to the bus, the computer's bus through data input and output lines. B0 to B7 they are data input or output lines. They are a single bi-directional lines. So if you wanted to read a data from a particular memory cell, then that data is passed to the sensor write circuit and this B7 will act as a data output line and the data is placed on the computer's bus. Similarly, if you wanted to do a write operation, the data from the computer's bus is fed through this data input line and it is fed to a sensor write circuit. From the sensor write circuit, through the bit lines B and B dash, it is placed in the corresponding uh, cell which is denoted by a word line. So here, this, is, this figure is an example of a memory chip consisting of, it consists of 16 words and each word is of length. 8 bits. So this is W0 to W15. 16 words are there and each word is of 8 bits of length. So the memory, this is the organization. 16 cross 8 is the organization or this memory chip consists of 128 bits of memory. So this is the organization. 16 cross 8 is the organization of the memory chip shown here and the, the, the size of this memory is 128 bits. There are two signals shown here. They are the control signals. R bar W complement that is a read or write signal. It specifies the required operation either read operation or write operation. So if this is set as 1 then it will be read operation. If this signal is set as 0 it will correspond to write operation. Now CS stands for chip select. Now, in this, uh, so if we have a multi-chip system, this is one chip. Similarly, if you have multiple chips, you can select the particular chip using a chip select signal. Since we have 16 word lines, how many address bits do we require to represent 
the number 15, W15. We require 4 bits to represent the maximum size of the word line that is 50. So using this 4 bits you can uh, access any word line of your interest. So if it is 0000, 0, 0, 0 then this address decoder will select the word line W0. If it, this is 0, 0, 0, 0001 the address decoder will select the word line W1. If this is 1111 1, 1, 1, then the address decoder will select the word line W15. So again during a write operation the sensor write circuit it receives data from the data bus and that data is stored in the cell of the selected word. Now we will see uh, given a bit organization what is the uh, number of external connections of address, data and control lines required? This is usually a question. So in the figure given here, we have 128 bit cells. The total number of bit cells is 128. So 128 where you have how many rows? 16 rows are there and each word line is of length 18. So 16 cross 18. Now how many address data and control lines do we require. So in order to denote 16, how many address lines do you require? 1, 2, 3, 4. So you require 4 address lines. Now here we have said each word line consists of 8, uh, eight bit data. So how many data lines do you require? 8. Now you have 2 control signals, read, write and the uh, chip select. So it is 2. So 4 plus 8 plus 2 will give you 14. Then additional 2 signals are, 2 more lines are required that is for the positive supply and the ground. Take another example where you have a memory organization where you have 1 kilobits of memory. 1 kilobits uh, means 1024. 1024. So again if you if each word line stores 8 bit of information then how many word lines do you require 128 word lines where each word line stores 8 bits of information to represent 128 so it is 0 to 127 to represent 127 how many bits do you require you require 7 bits so the address lines how many external address lines do you need 7 to represent uh, 8 data bits you require 8 external lines then this 2 stands for the read write and the chip select control signal so altogether we need 19 plus 2 this 2 stands for the power supply uh, positive voltage and the ground so they will give you a bit organization and they will ask you to write the external connections required for it so we have seen uh, how the memory cells are arranged in a random access memory again i'll show you the diagram so here you have memory cells and uh, the row is called as word line each column is connected to a sensor write circuit using the bit lines now we'll go more into the random access memory again going into the definition any location which can be accessed for a read or write operation in some fixed amount of time and it is independent of the location's address. Such a location is called as a random access memory. The two divisions of the random access memory is static RAM denoted as SRAM and dynamic RAM denoted as DRAM. Now what is a static RAM? In static RAM we use latches as the storage elements and they can store data indefinitely as long as the DC power is applied to it. So the storage element is a latch it can keep the information or keep the data in the cell as long as the DC power is given to it. These static RAMs are used to build cache memory. Now the dynamic RAM. Dynamic RAMs, they use capacitors as a storage element. And these DRAMs cannot retain data very long without the capacitors being recharged by a process called refreshing. So here the storage element is a capacitor. And how do you store the data? You have to keep recharging the capacitors and the process is called as refreshing. These DRAMs are used to build main memories. So SRAM is used to build cache and DRAM is used to build the main memory. Now we will move on uh, into the details of 
a static ram and a dynamic ram a static ram cell a static ram cell is denoted by s ram so again moving on to the definition the storage element in a static ram cell is a latch and it stores information as long as the power is applied to it these memories are called as static random access memory here in the diagram i have shown one memory cell this is one memory cell so if you remember the previous diagram here we have many memory cells take one memory cell this memory cell is connected to a word line w0 it is also connected uh, through the bit lines b7 b7 dash it is connected to a sensor write circuit from a sensor write circuit it is connected to a data input or output line so this is the configuration so i am going to talk about one cell here this is one memory cell this memory cell is made up of two inverters which are cross connected and that forms a latch so here you have two inverters it is cross connected and this forms a latch and this latch is connected to b and b dash through two transistors t1 and t2 these transistors are activated using a word line so word line activates these transistors so whenever you wanted to store an information these transistors are closed or they are turned on so these transistors they act as a switch and they are controlled by a word line whenever the word line is ground level if when this is at ground level that means these two transistors are turned off so this latch will retain its state now we will see the read operation and write operation so how does a read operation happen first the word line is activated that means the transistors t1 and t2 is closed so the word line is activated t1 is closed t2 is closed so whatever there is in uh, the cell will be given to b and b dash okay now let's say uh, the cell is in state 1 that is this cell is storing a bit information of 1 so when this is storing a bit information of 1 so if there is a one here since we have a, a inverter it is a zero here and it is cross connected you will have a zero here and you will have a one here so when this is in the cell is in state 1 one, one will be here in the position x and this information is transferred through the transistor to the bit line so bit line will be having a value 1 now look here the position y will have a value 0 and this value zero through the transistor t2 is given to the bit line b dash then the sensor write circuit will transmit the say state to the output line whatever there is in the b and b dash is given or it is sensed by a sensor write circuit and that information is given to the uh, bus the computer's bus so that is how we read an information now how do we write an information to write an information from the computer's bus the data will be given to a sensor write circuit the sensor write circuit will pass that information to the bit lines b and b dash so the bit uh, if i wanted to write a value 1 from the sensor write circuit this bit line will have a value 1 and this bit line will have a value 0 then the word line is activated activated means these two transistors are turned on or they are closed so this value from this bit line b is transferred to x and the value from bit line b dash is transferred to the position y so that is a read and write operation so again i'll conclude uh, sorry i'll brief on the read operation word line is activated t1 and t2 is closed if the cell is in state 1 that means b will ha have a value 1 and b dash will have a value 0 if the cell is in state 0 b will have a value 0 b dash will have a value 1 then the sensor write circuit will sense the bit lines and the data is transmitted to the output lines for the write operation we set the values of b and b dash whatever value is there on the bus it is given to b or b dash activate the word line that is t1 and t2 is closed closed means these two transistors are on 
then the cell will acquire the state of B and B dash. So we will see the CMOS implementation of the uh, static RAM that we learned before. This is the static RAM diagram that we learned and the same diagram CMOS implementation is this. So here you have two inverters. So these two inverters are shown as CMOS transistors uh, here. So the first inverter constitutes the transistors T3 and T5. T3, T5. This is one inverter. And the second inverter is T4, T6. T4, T6. So these two inverters are cross-connected. Look here. It is cross-connected. Now, let's say the cell is in state 1. When this cell is in state 1, so let's look into the previous diagram. When this cell is in state 1, X will have a value 1. So this inverter will have a value 1 and the other side will have a value 0. So this is the T3 and T, T5. T3 and T5. So this is T3, T5 will constitute this inverter. Similarly, this inverter is T4 and T6. This is the second inverter. So when, I'm, when the cell is having a value 1, x will have a value 1, this side it will be 0, the same value will be given here and the complement will be given here 1. That means the transistors T3 and T6 is on, T5 and T4 is off. So when your cell is in state 1, the voltage at x is high, T3, T6 is on, T4, T5 is off. Now using the CMOS technology, uh, we have so many advantages like lower power consumption, higher speed. So the CMOS requires only 5 voltage. That is older version requires only a supply voltage of 5 volt. The newer version requires only 3.3 volt. So we'll see. So this is just the CMOS implementation of what you have uh, learned here. The RAM cell. The read and write operation remains the same. So we'll see the merit and demerit of using static RAMs. The merit is lower power consumption. Second one, the SRAM can be accessed quickly. The memory access time for a, a static a RAM is very less. So data can be accessed quickly. And it does not require a refresh circuitry. Why? Because we are giving a supply. So, but we have to make sure supply is given always. So it does not require a refresh circuitry. Now what is the demerit? It is a volatile memory. We always have to give a supply voltage. Once the supply is gone, the data will be lost. The second disadvantage is the high cost. You, as you can see, we are using uh, 6 transistors here. T1, T2, T3, 4, 5, 6. So, it, it has a high cost.